or had some uh, ethics. morals, ethics in their lives together uh, that was unique. And this was uh, small parts of them. And also the situation that you have seen when he went uh, to Dimashq, to Damascus, and uh, he started doing trading there. When this Roman soldier, he passed, and he hit him with the horse, and he uh, cursed him, he told him, may Allah cut your tongue. Then the other one didn't say anything. The, the, there was one Arab who was living there, and Umar was coming from Mecca. So Umar told him, he, why didn't you insult him like what I did? He said, this is a Roman soldier, how can I say something to him? He said, you are telling me that you are living here in this nice city and I should be jealous from you? You are living here as slaves. What is your honor? Because in the desert you were living, they were not very rich, they were not very strong, but they have honor. But when this Arab, he came to the city, he learned that Romans are the masters. You, are, you, are, you have honor only when you go to your place. But here you have to learn that those are the masters and you are the slaves. So this is how they used to look to the Romans at that time. And also, uh, one situation is when a Jewish person, he had a quarrel with that Arab person and he said that he stole in my money, I bought him some, some uh, food and he didn't have the money to pay and he told I will pay you next year with the interest because they used to use the interest also at that time, the riba. And he didn't pay me. So the Arab told, I didn't pay him because when I took the food, I found that it is spoiled. He put only the nice food on the top, and in the bottom it was all spoiled. That's why I didn't pay him, because he cheated me. Then the, the, one of the Arab leaders of Mecca, he told his son, pay the Jew, pay him his money. Because we don't want people to say that one person who was, was oppressed in our city. So they don't want people to say about them this. He doesn't know who is telling the truth. And then the Jew, the, the, the other guy, he insulted the Jew and told him, if he didn't uh, tell not to harm you, I would beat in you. Then the Jew replied and said, when our prophet comes, we will kill all of you, the Arabs. Because... The Jews at the time of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they knew that there would be a Prophet coming at that time. And they were thinking that he will come from the people of Israel, from the Jews. And when they knew that he is the Prophet of Allah and he is not coming from them, he will be from the other child of Ibrahim, who is Ismail, not from Ishaq. Then they were the worst enemies against him, just because he didn't come from those people. And one uh, small story about that, when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was young, uh, he went with his uncle Abu Talib, they used to go to Syria every summer for trading. So he took him he took Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was about he was a teenager at that time, and they had rest beside a house of a monk. His name is Bahira. And then he came to them and said, "I want to invite you to my house." And they were uh, surprised because every year they pass by this place. They rest beside this house. And he never invited them to food. So he invited them and they accepted the invitation, but he told them, I want all of you to come. So they came and because Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was the youngest, they told him, stay beside our camels and our things. So he stayed there. And then that man, when they came to his house, he started looking for that boy, he said, I told all of you. He said, it's only that boy. We left him to guard our things. He said, bring him also. So, 
he, they, they brought him inside and he started looking at this boy from all sides and after they finished food he said uh, who is the relative of this boy who is, who is the most rel relative to him among you so Abu Talib his uncle said I am his father he said no you are not his father his father is not alive he said how did you know he said I know this boy's father shouldn't be alive now he's an orphan and yes he was his father was not alive and his mother was not alive and then he told uh, uh, this man told Abu Talib where are you go taking this boy to he said I'm taking him to Asham to Syria he said don't take him there there are a lot of Jews there and if they recognize him as I recognized him now they will try to kill him so take him back don't take him there so Abu Talib his uncle he got afraid and he took him back to Mecca so the, the meaning that this monk he was Christian and the Christians and Jews they knew at that time there will be a new prophet and some of them they knew even how he would look like and this man recognized him and told and he knew that the Jews would like to kill him if they recognize him the same as the same way that he recognized because they will know that he's an Arab and he's not from them so uh, of course you you don't find someone who tell these things now but at that time they will wait they, they have been telling everyone the Jews in Mecca and Medina they have been telling everyone there will be coming a prophet and he will lead us and we will follow him and we will be the leaders of the world because they were thinking that he will come from the uh, from the people of Israel so actually the question is if he came from them you will follow him no Not because him. because uh, one uh, Isa alayhi salam was from yeah. Isa alayhi salam, Jesus peace be upon him, he was from them, he's the son of Mary. And Musa alayhi salam, they didn't follow him. Actually this was one of the things, maybe I, I told it here before, one of the Jewish uh, rabbis. He was asked by one brother, why don't you become Muslim? You know that Islam is the truth. He said, Musa have been sent to us and he was one from, he, he was from us and we didn't listen to him. You want me to listen to another prophet from another tribe? So, it is not enough for someone to know the truth in order to follow it. Yeah. You have any other questions? You have to, uh, maybe you have to tell them who uh, Warak ibn Auf is, uh, the old man. Oh, yes. Because so, it's a little bit confusing if they don't know who this man is, he just comes there, you know. It's, uh, ah, this uh, old, very old man with the very white and long beard who was mm -hmm. walking, his name is Warak ibn Naufal. He was the cousin of the Khadija. wife of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Khadija. Uh, she was, by the way, she was older than Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, by more than ten years, and uh, she was his first wife, and he never married anyone else when she was alive. And the Arabs at that time, it was part of their tradition to marry uh, the unlimited number of women. So. This tradition was existing there long time ago, not only for Arabs, but for others as well. And uh, she was very faithful woman to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, even he, 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 uh, 
when he used to see people worshipping the statues, he used every year to go one month and stay in the mountain. He didn't want to uh, stay with those people and seeing them doing this worshipping. So this was his vacation from work every month and he used to isolate himself just to think about God and how to worship God. And every two days she used to bring him food by herself. She was an old woman at that time. He was about 40 and she was about 50. And she was very rich. She had many slaves and many servants. But uh, she decided that for her husband she has to bring the food herself. So every day she used to carry the food and climb the mountain and give him the food. Every three days she used to do this herself. And when Jibreel alayhi salam, Jibreel is the, is, is the angel who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to each prophet. So he came to Isa, he came to Mary, he came to Musa, he came to Ibrahim, he came to all of the prophets, and he came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. With the first time he came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam with the message that he is the messenger of Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving him this message. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam he got afraid from him because he didn't know what is this. And he ran away to his house and he was shaking because the angel showed him himself in the sky and he was very giant. And when someone is very afraid, he, he becomes shaking, shaking like, uh, like it is cold. It is not cold, but he's just because he's afraid. Then she didn't ask him what happened. She, 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 he, he said, I want to be covered. She gave him a cover and then she went, she, she, she waited until he calmed down and then he started speaking. I saw this, I saw this. She told him, Allah will never let you down. You are a generous person. You help the weak. You feed the poor. So whatever happens, it will not be something bad. Because a person like you, Allah will not let something bad happen to him. And then she knew that her cousin, Waraq ibn Nawfal, he was following the true religion of Ibrahim. Because Ibrahim alayhi salam, he was living in Mecca for some time with his son, and he's the one who brought the, the true belief in Allah to people. But after some time, people left this, and they started worshipping the statues. Very few people were still only worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of them was this very old man who is Waraq ibn Nawfal, the cousin of Khadija. He said, we go to my cousin, maybe he will know something about this. Then they went to him the next day. They asked him to come. When you find that the young boy, Ali, the, the cousin of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he brought this old man. And then Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started telling him, I was sitting in the cave, and then a man came to me and said to me, read. I told him I cannot read because I'm illiterate. Then he hugged me and he was very strong. He told me, read. He said, to, to, uh, I told him I cannot read. Then he hugged me again and he was about to crush my bones. And he told me, read in the name of your Lord, the one who created the, the one who made the creation, the one who created the human from a piece of cloth, the, 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 the first verses that have been given to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then I left the place, he disappeared, I left the place, and then I saw a very giant uh, thing on the sky, told me, Ya Muhammad, you are the messenger of God and I am Jibreel. You are the messenger of God and I am Jibreel. And then I ran back home. He said, what is the name that you said? He said, Jibreel. He said, if what you told me is the truth, he is the same angel that came to Musa. And if what you told me is the truth, then you have to prepare yourself for a very hard time. I would like to be there when your people kick you out of the city. 
He said, my people will pick me out of my city. All of them, they love me. Because Muhammad وسلم, he was known as a sadiq al-ameen, the honest and the truthful. Everyone liked him. Everyone respected him. Everyone was considering him, they, they were considering him as the most wise man. He was a young man, but he was very wise. So everyone in his city respected him. He said, my own people will kick me out. He said, everyone who brought a message like what you brought to your people, each of them have been kicked out of their places. Uh, so Waraka ibn Nawfal, he was a very old man, as we saw. He didn't live long after this. He passed away after a short time. This is a small presentation prepared by my sister. A brief introduction about the Arabic language. So, it is one of the six official languages of the United Nations. Maybe there is, uh, this one is. Uh, any information for some of you but there are six official languages in the United Nations Arabic is one of them and Arabic is the fourth most widely spoken language after English, Spanish and Chinese the number of speakers from 220 to 280 million people Uh, I would not call them types, but uh, let's say three dialects, three main dialects of the Arabic language. There is the Arabic language that we write, and we're still writing, uh, which is the language of the Quran, and everyone who writes Arabic still writing it this way because there is no other way of writing it so it is not like uh, for example a classical latin language that no one is writing today or no one is using today for writing letters but today un uh, until today all of the arabic newspapers all of the uh, arabic books <coughs> even the books which are written by uh, authors who live now it is written in this language. Uh, people in their way of speaking, they are not speaking this language exactly, but in the writing it is always written in this language. So there are uh, four major dialects and within the same country you can find people speaking different ways. But the nice thing or the, 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 the thing which is special about Arabic that Arabs they understand each other when they speak unless there is something else mixed with the Arabic so for example in some places in Morocco there is uh, the, the language called the Shilha which is from the Barber the, the, some people they borrow some of these words for example in Algeria and Tunisia uh, some people they include some French words in the language so these things will not be understood by the others 
but all of the words which are coming from Arabic are understood. So, for example, I'm from Egypt. I can talk to anyone from any Arab country and we can understand each other quite well. Of course, maybe a few words in my dialect you will not understand, but we will manage to communicate. So, every Arab person can communicate with any other Arab person. So, the, uh, the difference in the dialects it didn't go very diverse so that people don't understand each other. Is it, is it more like it's it's more like styles, not dialects. It's more like a style. Yeah, maybe it is because like the that. word word maybe changes. Hmm? The word itself it changes. That's why you cannot understand it. It's not like he says like in, we have in Nor Norway and Sweden. It's not like we say it in like he says like like uh, I say it like this and the other guy he says the same sentence like oh, I say it like this. You understand what mm. I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> mm. yeah. And also one thing is that uh, Arabic is a very a rich language. It has a tremendous number of words. So, uh, one thing, for example, the lion. The lion, there are 11 or, or 12 words in Arabic, all of them they mean lion. It is just mean lion, not, uh, not different types of lion. Just lion can be 11, or 11 to 12, or 12, I don't remember. So, uh, Asad is the most known one. Uh, Leif, Dargham, all of the, and, and other things. So Arabic is very rich language. You can find a lot of names for the same things, for the same thing. So in, in some areas of, of the Arab world, people use this word, this word. In other area, they use the other word. All of them are Arabic words, but uh, maybe the, the people in this place, they don't know uh, they, they, they are not very skilled in Arabic, so they know the word which is used only in their place. But Fusha never changes. Hmm? Fusha doesn't change. Uh, Fusha is, 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 is the Arabic itself. Yes, but the classical, the Quran, yeah. it never changes. No. It has the same Because shape. this is what we write. Yes. Yeah. So that's everywhere in the Arab they, they yes or, or am I wrong? because for example when, when 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 I speak to a person from another country the way to understand each other to speak the original Arabic between each other then we understand each other quite well and uh, almost everyone can speak this uh, this uh, original Arabic because the, 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 the things in our dialect are not very broad. So we want, we want to speak to each other, we speak the original Arabic. You will find that it, it comes out of conscious even, that uh, uh, when I speak to someone from another country, I just speak to him the original Arabic, so that we understand each other. These are the countries where Arabic is the main language spoken. And uh, the original Arabic is ca can be read and taught in every place because those are the Arab countries. But the, the Muslim world most of the Muslims in the world are not Arabs. And this is also very important information. The Arabs are only 20% of the Muslims in the world. So 80% of Muslims in the world today, they are not Arabs. But in every country which is, has majority of Muslims, the Arabic language is taught even for people who don't understand it, how to read it and how to write it, because it is the language of Quran. Uh, can go 
through this. There are some words which are derived from Arabic. Like for example algebra, this, the, this uh, science in math. Actually there is a book in, uh, in the University of Stavanger called The History of Algebra. And the first page of this book is in Arabic. Because it is, this uh, science is invented by uh, Al-Khwarizmi. Uh, his name is Khwarizmi and he invented also uh, Khwarizm. Khwarizm which is called now Algorithm. So Algorithm it is coming from Al-Khwarizm. So he invented this science of algebra. He invented the uh, algorithm, algorithms. Uh, and there are many, many other words which are derived from Arabic. There are many other words which derived from Hebrew, for example, because Hebrew has a similar history uh, like Arabic. There is one thing here, is that all of the Arabic words, we have something called the source, or the base, the basis. And the basis of every Arabic word is uh, normally three letters. This is the base, this is the source of the word. And from this source, you can construct nouns, you can construct verbs, you can construct uh, adjectives and you can construct about uh, up to 100 words from this source like this KTB which is like this it is written like this when they are connected and it is written like this If you move on the right side, Sheikh. If you move on this side. Oh. Yes. So this is Kaf, K. This is Ta, T. And this is Ba. So this one they are separated and this one they are connected. So these three letters, Kataba, refer to writing, to write something. So, you can say kitab, book, okay, and uh, katib, writer. Here is wrong, it is disk. Put, put the harakas and uh, the kumas and. <laughs> yeah? Put the. Uh, yeah. So, about 50 words can be derived from this. So, you use the disk to write, to, to sit on to write, so this is called maktab. Uh, the book itself it is kitab. Uh, when you write a letter, one of the names of the letter is maktub, something which is written. Katib is the writer, the person who writes is katib. Yaktub is the verb, pres present tense. Kataba is the past tense. So, <coughs> maktaba, library. So, library where it is uh, it have books which are written. So everything related to writing is coming from these three letters. But 
some other letters are added okay and one thing we notice here uh, this letter has two points this letter has one point and I put also some signs here these signs are for the tunes so when I put sign if, if one letter is like this with the line this sign is fatha a and this sign is dhamma u and this is kasra e and this is sukun silence so this uh, gives you the tune of the letter so it is not like in English if you want to say E you put E or I after the letter uh, if you want to say O you put O or U after the letter uh, if you want to say A you put A after the letter uh, so you don't need another letter to make the tune but the letter itself it has a tune but one important thing to know is that the original way of writing Arabic it didn't have those there was no fatha or dhamma or kasra and it didn't have points also so these points and those tunes they are new to Arabic so if I want to write something in the original Arabic language so for, exa for example if I want to write maktab in the original Arabic I will just write it like this like this without points without these signs it would be of course more difficult to read right but this how it is written in the original Arabic but after uh, Islam was spread and a lot of people become Muslims who are not Arabs so they needed some guidelines for example to differentiate between ta and ba if you remove the points from here and from here there is no different no difference right but how people they, they, they knew the difference because they know how the world look like they the, the Arabs they had very strong memories they could memorize books in their mind so the way that the word is written they will know how to read it and it was very easy for them to read it uh, so after uh, some people who are not Arabs become Muslims and it was difficult for them to read the Quran in this way so they put these points in the Quran for people in order to read the Quran in the correct way so they started by putting points on the letters and this was I think after Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him passed away by about 55 years and then after another 50 years they started putting the tunes to help more so now when you open the Mus'haf you will find a lot of signs on the word so that it can help you you will find even more signs like for example this you will find some signs like a small wow, some signs like this, some signs like this and all of this will help you how to pronounce not only with the tune but how long the tune should be where you should stop uh, for example if you stop in the middle of one sentence it may uh, give an opposite meaning you will find a sign like this will tell you you cannot stop here you have to stop here you cannot continue and some other sign like this you don't stop here because if you stop here the meaning will be cut for people who are who, who are not very efficient in the language not to make mistakes So, Arabic is written from right to left, not from the left to right. So this is how this word is written in Arabic.
course, uh, Karim is not with Aleph. It is. It should be written like that. Uh, Just with the. Uh, with Kef. Yeah. Like this. But then you then you have to have uh, mm? ah. You have yeah. to have ah on top yes. of the K. Mm. Yeah, if you want to put it like this. Uh, this is also one of the <laughs> mistakes in the presentation because actually those numbers are called the Arabic numbers because the numbers that we are writing today, not those, but those, those are called the Arabic numerals. And there have been many types of numerals before the Islamic era and this type, especially this type, is called the Arabic numerals. So having the zero as round, having the number two like this, number three, like this, these are called the Arabic numerals. So, for, for, so it was based on the number of angles. So in two, there are two angles. So in uh, uh, zero it is, and, and actually the, uh, the zero itself, the number zero, it was invented by the Arabs. Before that time, no one uh, had a symbol for zero. One minus one, uh, nothing. But zero itself, as a number, it was invented by them. And those numerals are called the Arabic numerals. Even in the programs for writing PDF, when you choose the way of nu numerals, you will find this as I did find as the Arabic numerals. Those numbers, they were uh, made in India. So those are Indian numerals, not Arabic numerals. And one of the, I mean, the sad things is you will find in most of the Arab countries, people are using those. Yes, why? I in don't Quran know. too. In Morocco and uh, Libya, they are still using this. But in Egypt, the, the, the western part of the Arab countries, they are using this. But the eastern part, they are using those. But um, all of the Quran, as I have seen, they use this dance. Uh, the no, Indian. in the, 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 the Quran books in the western... Yeah? All it all is, the... No, it is using this. No, this one? No, Except I... for on the page. I mean in the... In the, in the yeah, you... no, the verses. If you, if you get any uh, Quran book which is uh, printed in Morocco, uh -huh. you will see these numbers. There are some of them in the masjid here. I haven't seen yet. Yes. Yeah, oh, I can no, show you. Yeah. So, in the western part of the Arab world, they are still using this, and the eastern part they are using this. When we were, when we were reading in Fajr, when we were reading Quran, yeah. I told you, it's a, find the page yeah. number, I said, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, the other ones are the... I think I have someone here. This is in Morocco, so you can see here the, the original <laughs> Arabic. So, uh, it's the first time I see this. I yeah. think it's the first time. I'm mm. 
because yeah. we don't have many of those here. It should it should be standard yes. standardized. Yes. I mean, yeah. it's. Mm. I mean, why use Indian when it has nothing to do with? Yansawa? Yeah, this is one of the sad things, as yeah. I said. Because the entire world knows the, the simple yeah. ones. It will be just make it easier for the people. I, to I don't use the others in my way in my writing. Even my I think all the Qurans I have at home is this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, because yeah. most of the Quran copies are printed in uh, Saudi and they are using this. So. Yes. Uh, why do they put like one, two, comma and three, mm? four, five like together? Like a division? Is there a meaning or no? Mm. Well, 345, 600. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, but it is not, uh, I mean, no, link. no it's, not, uh, it's not original to that. But. So, for example, here, the, the three is like this. So, th this was the basis on, of them, the, the number of angles. This how the, the two numbers were shaped. So, two has two angles, three has three angles, like this. Yeah. Uh, Arabic has uh, 28 letters. So the number of letters is not so big. For example, in Russian, there is, uh, I think, 34 or something. So the number of letters is not very large. And we don't have this uh, capital and uh, small letters like in English and other languages. And we have three long vowels. You know what is the long vowels? Like A, uh, E, yeah. U, like this. So we have only those three. A, uh, and E, and U. We don't have like, for example, in Norwegian there is U, and there is O, there is A, uh, <laughs> like that. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing them <laughs> correctly. There is this one. Oh. And there is this. And there is this. And ah. uh, uh, there is there was another uh, one. Huh? A with uh, U with uh, slash O. Oh yeah, I'm talking about uh, A or A. Uh -huh. This those three. And then you will have this and this uh, and you will have this mm, this not in Norwegian mm. no. but uh, uh, the, the, this is not in Norwegian uh, right? You know? no that's Swedish ah, this on doubt yes Swedish or German yes. Uh, 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 okay. uh, 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 so it is here right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, only this three uh, so in in if terms of the tune, there are three uh, tunes. Hmm? Hmm? Is it? Hmm? We cannot think. Please. Oh. No, no, no. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I think in the U also there is uh, U with the round on it, right? In Norwegian there is like ull level. Is it with the uh, with round? No, we don't have no. Huh? We don't have the two together. Okay, so, so how is... Uh, That's Swedish. Ull level is... Under. U L L L L I E O Ah, like this. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. Then I thought that's something. Yes, yes. Four, four. Four. We start to use this. We use A A. Okay. Two A's to get the O. But now we just use one and. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah this is good to know. And uh, the same uh, with the uh, A, 
start with and ABC. Uh, the first two ones, Alif, like A, and the second one is B, like B, but then we start with T, like T. So the Arab is like ABT, not yes. ABC. This is Fe, Fe, and this is G, like J. We don't have uh, a letter which is G in Arabic. This doesn't exist. So we have only J. So we know G in English, it can be J and can be G. But in Arabic, there is only J. There is no G. And this is Ha. Ha. Impossible. No, but yeah. I know that they have uh, this letter in uh, yeah, okay. Russian, I think, and no. in other language, we have this in Russian. Huh. Ha. Huh. No, not ha. Ha is many languages, but mm. ha. Not the, not the, not that ha. Not the mm. one that with the air. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. It's in Dutch. Okay. Ha in Dutch. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. And this is ha. I know that Tcha is in Dutch also? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Danish too. Yeah, and in German. Das Buch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there is Del, uh, like D, and Vel, V. So we have F, and we have the and this like this you have gym you have gym in 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 uh, in russia gym in bosnia in uh, croatia yeah gym yeah. like j, j in english j. Also. it's just a j oh yes so this is equivalent to th in two different situations like when you say fa is like three and the is like when you say the. Okay? The camel, the car. So say the. So this is the. One, but when it is the, when you say free. Okay? Thousand. I think in, in Norwegian uh, it's not uh, pronounced. Uh, for, for example, they say Tuzin, right? Mm -hmm. no. This is Zay, like Z, and this is Ra, like R, and yeah, this one is just repeated. Seen, like S, Sheen, like SH. And then this letter doesn't those two those two letters are not existing in many languages. Letter called sod. So there is
S which is seen and there is Sad which you can this is a thick S so it is not S it is S S Sad like that so you say the S but you uh, fill your mouth with air with air saw saw and also there is the D which is then and there is uh, Lord is a thick D so we don't say D we say B B and also there is the T which is that and then there is the Ta which is a thick T <coughs> okay so they this we, we don't say T we say T T like this and also the next letter there is VAL in one context of course and then va so this is the and this is va va And uh, then there is one of the unique letters. Uh, it is not unique, I mean that it is existing only in Arabic, but it doesn't have similarity between this and other non Latin letters, which is Ain, A. This one. Ain. And There is one, this one is called Ghayn, Gha, Gha. When you are uh, gargling something, if you have a problem in your throat and you are gargling with lemon or something, you say Gha, like this. Then when you, when you say the letter in the correct way. And then there is Fa. Which is F, and then there is Qaf, which is little bit similar to K, of course, K itself. Kaf 
which we have seen like this also but this one is is not k it is ka ka so this is also another letter which is not one of the latin ones uh, the calf is not in this slide, yeah, here. Then this is calf, which is K, and lamb, which is L, and meme, which is N, M, and noon, which is N, and ha, which is H, and wa. This letter, wow. You know what his name is? Wow. <laughs> is for O, U, W, and of course you can list those uh, I don't know if there are others. So all of the things which you make your mouth round on it. It is all of the, these tunes can be pronounced by this letter. Wow. And then, uh, you have the yet. Yeah. which includes E, I, Y, um, like this, for example, in Norwegian. No, this A. A, A? A. Ah, okay, it's not that. Uh, what else? Nothing else. Nothing else? Okay. Hmm. Yeah. So those three, when we, when we want to say yeah, like when, when we say we want to say yes, uh, I, for example, when you want to J, say J, 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 yeah, the Norwegian J, you mean? Yeah. Hmm. Y. Yeah. But this is. Uh, not the English one, no. the other one. Because uh, this is in Norwegian and German. German is called Jot. Mm -hmm. Norwegian, I don't know. What this letter called in Norwegian? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm. Almost the same. But this is a Y. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I have two friends uh, in our uh, research group. One is the leader of our uh, uh, Norwegian lab, and the other one is the, the leader of the Swedish lab. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's very interesting when they sit with each other, all of the time, the Norwegian is telling jokes about Swedish, and the Swedish <laughs> is telling jokes about Norwegian. <laughs> and we don't understand anything, but it's nice to, to watch listen. them. Yeah. Like, uh, they're <laughs> <"Lul, lul, ta, laughs> <laughs> But we have better jokes than Norwegian. We have better jokes in Sweden yeah. against Norwegian. But they yes, say, they no, say. we have better. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a war. Mm. <laughs> World war. Yeah. And then when they are sitting with Finnish, <laughs> oh, they, the Finnish, they cannot tell any jokes. <laughs> Seriously. They are just sitting and listening. The both of them, they are telling f jokes about the Finnish. Finnish and the, <laughs> the others, they don't have this uh, skill, I'm not sure. Yeah. So this is in brief. I mean, all of the Arabic letters. So in the in the next uh, lecture, inshallah, I will bring. Uh, there is a, a, a nice flash that uh, gives you the 
how the mouth is drawn from inside and how you put your tongue or you adjust the mouth and throat in order to pronounce each letter in the correct way. So that you pronounce it as it should be pronounced. Because some letters are from here, like A, like Ha, and some letters are from the throat, like Ain, Ghain, and some letters are from here, like Qaf, Ha, and some letters are a little bit inside the mouth, like Kaf, and some, so, some letters are uh, within the tongue, inside the mouth, like Dhal, Ta, Tha, and some letters from the lips, like wow, like meme. So it comes all the way out like this. But maybe now, I'm not sure if we still have time. Oh, we already. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so inshallah we, we continue next time, inshallah.